physics students, welcome to um, video two in topic 4.4, wave behavior. And in this sort of short video, I'm going to talk about um, diffraction and how diffraction um, differs from refraction, which is a common um, common source of confusion among students at first. Okay, and really, um, just to start off defining it, diffraction is quite a simple concept. It's it's the spreading out of waves when they encounter an obstacle or go through an opening. And you guys actually see and experience diffraction all the time without possibly knowing it, okay? So for example, um, if I'm having water droplets dripping in a tank like this and I have this barrier right here, you can see that behind the barrier, the waves spread out, okay? And they start curving back behind it. Um, that's called diffraction, okay? It turns out that the, uh, the, the width of the obstacle that the waves are encountering has a great effect on the amount of diffraction. It turns out that when the width of the obstacle is, um, is on the order of or less than the wavelength of the waves, then there's more diffraction. When the width of the object or the size of the object is much, much bigger than the wavelength, you get little or no diffraction. It turns out that this this sort of truism about diffraction has a great effect on the way uh, lots of lots of waves and everything behaves sort of in nature and otherwise. Okay, so again, in this diagram right here, the wavelength is much smaller than the obstacle. There's no wave on the other side, and you can see there's very little spreading out of those light waves here. Now, if I were to take that same size obstacle here and expose it to waves that have a greater wavelength, which are on the order of the same uh, width of the object, you're going to see that there's going to be bending of those waves on the other side. And there would actually be waves in this, in this area right on the other side. Okay, so here, no waves on the other side. Here, waves on the other side because the waves have actually spread out and occupied that space on the other side of the obstacle from the uh, wave propagation, okay? Now, I just want to talk to you um, briefly about a, a very serious and um, tragic sort of real-world ap application of um, diffraction, okay? If you remember in 2004, there was an, an enormous earthquake um, in the eastern Indian Ocean, uh, and it created, it generated a tsunami that traveled all the way through the Indian Ocean, all the way across, and actually hit Africa, parts of Australia, India, and so forth, okay? Um, now, this was the 9.2 magnitude earthquake, which was the third largest ever recorded on a seismograph. A lot of people died, okay? Lots and lots of people died. It was a tragic event. People died in Thailand, Indonesia, India, Sri Lanka, uh, Madagascar, uh, the coast of Kenya. Lots and lots of people died, okay? So let's talk a little bit about the physics of this. Now, if you look at this uh, computer generation of the wave as it goes across the Indian Ocean, you can see that the wave actually spreads out when it reaches certain spots. Well, those certain spots are islands. And it turns out that these islands, like these islands right here, okay, it turns out that those islands were uh, on the order of the same um, length as the, as, as the wavelength, the size of the islands. So what happened was those waves diffracted around those islands. You can see, especially when the wave gets to Sri Lanka, the wave actually sort of turns around and spreads out along the western side and goes actually up the western side of Sri Lanka, if you look carefully, okay? That had tragic effects for that country. Okay, so a little bit of the physics. The estimated displacement of ocean water was about 30 cubic kilometers, okay? So it was like half the bottom of a full bathtub kind of falling down, maybe a centimeter or two. Imagine what would happen to the surface of the water in that bathtub. It would start sloshing back and forth in a sort of uncontrollable fashion. This meant that it, uh, the amount of energy re release was on the order of 10 to the 17 joules. And the wavelength of ocean waves is typically between 30, at 30 meters and one kilometer. And there's such a huge range because if you recall, the depth of our, the, the wavelength and the speed of uh, ocean waves depends very much on the depth. And of course, the topography of the ocean floor is quite complicated and it's constantly changing, okay? So in this diagram here, you can see the diffraction around these islands, okay? Here's a close-up of the island of Sri Lanka. It turns out that lots and lots of people died um, and there was a lot of damage on the southwest coast between Colombo and Gaul, all right? Even though this side of the island, this area, was on the opposite side of the island from where the earthquake originated, which was way out here, far, far to the east, okay? Turns out there was a tsunami eight to nine meters high on the other side of Sri Lanka, okay? Um, so anyway, just a, a really sort of a tragic um, 
very, very tragic um, sort of example of diffraction in, um, in nature and just proof that every single, every kind of wave diffracts no matter what kind of wave it is. In fact, that's the defining feature of waves, okay? So again, for an obstacle of width W, uh, when the width is on the order of the wavelength, there's more diffraction. When it's much, much greater, there's little or no diffraction, okay? So, for example, consider sound. If you have a middle C, the frequency of sound, uh, is 262 hertz, and if we consider it at, ro at room temperature, where the speed is about 343, the wavelength of a typical sound wave is on the order of about one meter, okay? This is the order of magnitude of a lot of everyday objects that we can, um, that we, that we interact with. For example, open doorways. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, diffraction through apertures. It turns out that it's the same physics as around obstacles, but therefore we can hear that sound diffracts around objects around the order of one meter so we can hear around objects okay now light on the other hand has a very 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 small wavelength as you know okay that's the reason why you can't see around or through objects okay because this is much much smaller you know 550 nanometers is much 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 smaller than everyday objects that we're familiar with and that we interact with so therefore we can't see around or through objects but we can hear around them really 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 cool okay all right so if you consider radio waves which is a very important method of information communication in our world okay radio waves commercial radio waves say on your uh, uh your your radio dial have a range of about 50 kilohertz to about 108 megahertz this means that their wavelengths are on the order from three to about six kilometers okay this is about equal to or less than the height of a lot of mountains and hills around us so what happens is that radio waves diffract around hills to be received by a radio receiver okay so if you ever notice like if you're driving in the mountains and you have your radio on Sometimes when you, you're in certain areas, the reception might be better or worse than it was before. That's because of diffraction and also a bit of reflection, but mostly because of refraction of radio waves throughout those hills. Now, waves of shorter wavelength or higher frequency, such as television, don't diffract as much. Therefore, television signals are typically weaker in hilly terrain. Okay. So again, AM radio has, um, has, a, has a longer wavelength. So less diffraction, and so there's a weaker signal. FM radio has a shorter wavelength, so there's more diffraction. Okay, remember, uh, AM radio has a has a sm has a lower frequency than FM radio. Okay, now it turns out that the same principle applies for devices such as mobile phones, wireless modems, and so forth. So mobile phones. Uh, typically have frequencies uh, between 850 and 1900 megahertz, which means that their wavelengths are 16 to 35 centimeters, less than one meter. Wireless routers, about 13 centimeters. This is good news for all of us that use these things because it means that they're able to diffract around objects on the same order of magnitude in terms of their size, right? Um, and we want diffraction to occur because that's how that's how that signal reaches us, is those waves spreading out on the other side of obstacles so we can actually receive that transmission of that electromagnetic um, wave, okay? So as I said before, the same concept applies for waves going through openings, or refer to it, we refer to it in physics as an aperture, okay? So in this case, W refers to the opening of the width. Um, or the, the, the width opening. When the width is, um, is on the order of the wavelength, there's more diffraction, which is in the right-hand picture here. When the width is much greater than the wavelength, there's little or no diffraction in the left-hand picture right here. So again, no wave here, lots of waves here. Okay. So again, can you hear sound through open doors? Yes, that's diffraction. Can you see around the corners of open doors? Of course not, because the wavelength of light is much, much, much less than uh, the average distance of a door, which is about a meter wide. Okay? Okay. Um, so a couple of examples of uh, diffraction patterns. You see, if you ever, if you ever like in a cliffy or mountainous area over a lake, a big body of water such as the ocean, or maybe on a bridge, you see diffraction all the time. Okay. These are not these are not sort of rare, freakish photos. This happens all the time. So you can see, for example, here these ocean waves are going through this opening between these two islands. Really nice diffraction pattern. Note also the interference pattern. You have diffraction on this side of this island and this side and you have a really nice diffraction pattern right in there okay so diffraction really important you see it everywhere in nature uh, and uh, and again it depends in the case of through an aperture as shown in this little gif here um, the size of the aperture makes a really big difference relative to the wavelength in terms of what happens on the other side